For this lesson we're going to be looking at inequalities and specifically we're going to be looking at linear inequalities. <clears throat> now inequalities, you the opposite of that would be an equality which we call an equation. So we're already well familiar with the idea of solving equations but we're going to be taking a look in the next couple of lessons at the idea of solving these mathematical expressions or these mathematical questions that deal with greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So let's take a look at this very simple case I've given you here. 3x minus 1 is less than 8. Now if we consider this graphically, just to give you an idea of, of what it is this question is actually asking, the expression 3x minus 1, if we consider that on its own or if we consider that to be a function so we could express that graphically as a line as the line y equals 3x minus 1 which I've got in blue right here and the value 8 well we can also actually express that as a function or as an equation of a constant and that would be the line y equals 8 which I have here in red so when I say 3x minus 1 less than 8 if I ask you to under what circumstances is that true? If we look at the graph, well, less than the line 8 is simply anything below that line. That's what it means to be less than 8. Less than 8 is anything below that line. And so the question becomes, well, where is this blue line below the red line? And that's fairly obvious that the blue line is below the red line. Let's see, do I have my highlighter is what I was looking for. There we go. And that's going to be this section of the line. Okay? And so where does that line up? Now we're not done answering that. We've identified it. But it's x that we're concerned with here. So what we do is we extend down from there obviously it occurs here that's everything left of this point is below the line everything to the right of this point is above so that's occurring at three and so what is my answer now it obviously has to do with three and it's the values left of three and the other thing we have to focus on is the fact that this says less than it doesn't say less than or equal to it says less than so we don't include three so how do I say to the left of 3 but not including 3? That would be x less than 3. And that's my solution. Now, although uh, seeing this visually from a graph, particularly from a graph that's already been provided from you, is, is pretty simple to look at, it's actually, there's a lot involved there. Normally you won't be given the graph. You'll have to come up with all that on your own. So we would look, we would hope for something better and, and we tend to focus on algebraic techniques, which we're also going to do here. So the way that you solve an inequality, um, something that you should have seen before, if you've run across an inequality, the way you solved it was by solving the equation and then doing some sort of testing. So for example, if I solve this, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I end up with 3x equals 9. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I end up with x is equal to 3. So I have to test x less than 3 and I have to test x greater than 3. I have to test on either side of that. So and let's not forget we're looking for 3x minus 1 is less than 8. So this is my left side and this is my right side. So if I test x less than 3, so let's choose 2. My left side is equal to 3 times 2 minus 1 which is equal to 6 minus 1 which is equal to 5 and my right side is of course still equal to 8 so my left side is less than my right side so that's true so that means that values of x less than 3 gave me a good result for completeness I really should test both sides because it is possible it's not the case here, but it is possible that you can actually have the test work out on both sides. So in this case, I'll test x equal to 4, and my left side is equal to 3 times 4 minus 1. That's 12 minus 1, which is equal to 11. My right side hasn't changed. The right side is still 8. So in this case, left side less than right side is not true. And so this one does not pass 
So therefore, x less than 3. That's my solution. This one is not correct. This is correct. This one is not correct. Obviously, I've when I refer to something here, I'm saying, well, this is how we used to do it. We're going to talk about how to do that now, going to something a little bit more direct. And so you can see this is what we've just finished solving. How we represent our solution, we've got a few ways that we can do it. And these are more formal ways. In my previous, I just wrote down x less than 3. But really, we should be saying what kind of numbers x would include. So x is a member of the real number set x such that x is less than 3. We can use interval notation, which I've introduced in a previous lesson, and I told you that you'll be seeing more and more of it. So this is kind of an interesting thing. It says x is a member of the interval from negative infinity to 3. And then we can also represent this using a number line. It's x less than 3, so it's at 3, but it does not include 3. And then it's everything to the left of that point. Number lines are sometimes awkward, especially if you're not working with two colors. So one thing you might do here is you might show something like that if you're just working with a black pencil over a black number line. So open circle here to say it doesn't include 3, and then everything to the left of that number 3. Now, before we can get into the algebra, we have to go through a couple of rules here. And I just want you to... Um, Bear with me, some of these things may seem pretty obvious to you, but we do have to talk about this. Okay, so I'm going to start with an inequality, 4 less than 8. And so that's true, those numbers, four, the number 4 is less than number 8. So what happens if I add a positive number? So if I add, let's just add 2. So if I add a positive number, I take 4 plus 2 less than 8 plus 2. And really, I'm, I'm writing this out, but what I should be doing, actually a better way to do this, is I really should be doing this as left side, right side. So my left side becomes 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. My right side becomes 8 plus 2, which is equal to 10. And is 6 less than 10? Yeah, the left side is still less than the right side. So adding a positive number, that worked just fine. Um, if I add a negative number, let's do negative 3. So I end up with my left side becomes 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. My right side becomes 8 minus 3, which is equal to 5. Is the left side less than the right side? Yes, it is. Okay, so that worked just fine. Adding positive, adding negative subtracting a positive so now I'm going to subtract now it's going to seem odd that I do it this way you might say well what's the difference here if I subtract 2 if I subtract a positive number that's the same as adding a negative number isn't it right those are the same thing so you know what I'm going to skip over this subtracting a positive and subtracting a negative are the same but just in the reverse order of adding a positive and adding a negative so those work just fine what about multiplying by a positive? If I multiply by a positive, let's multiply by 3. And so my left side becomes 3 times 4 is equal to 12. My right side, 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Left side, less than right side. Yep, that still worked. So multiplying by a positive works. Multiply by a negative. Let's multiply by negative 4. My left side becomes negative 4 times 4 is equal to negative 16 my right side becomes negative 4 times positive 8 is negative 32 is my left side less than my right side is negative 16 less than negative 32 the answer to that is no it turns out negative 32 is actually further to the left than negative 16 on the number line this did not work. What is actually the case here is that the left side is greater than the right side. And so what that means is that when you multiply by a negative, whenever you multiply by a negative, you have to reverse the sign of the inequality. 
It's the only way to make that work. So that is, and that was the whole point of me going through this to get to this. If we divide by a positive, divide by, um, let's see, 2 will work. If I divide by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Is 2 less than 4? Yes, it is. That works fine. Same thing that happened here with the multiply by negative is going to happen when I divide by negative. So let's divide by, how about negative 4? 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Which of those two statements is true? Is negative 1 less than negative 2 or is negative 1 greater than negative 2? This statement is correct. This one is incorrect. So when we divided by a negative number, once again, we had to reverse the sign of our inequality. So that's what I say here. Just in summary, we can use the same basic operations that we would, do, that we would with a regular equation. The difference is when you are multiplying or dividing by a negative value, the direction of your inequality has to change. So this first one, that's not going to be an issue because the first thing I'm going to do is add 3 to both sides. I end up with 2x greater than 8. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I end up with x greater than 4. That's it. That's my answer. If I wanted to express that answer a little bit more formally, I would say x member of r such that x greater than 4. But for something like this, if I'm just asking you to solve something like that quickly, I'm perfectly happy with you ending right there. Okay, how about here? I guess uh, the, one, the reason why we are going to end up going towards set notation eventually is because we're going to end up with more complicated solutions and we are going to have to represent them uh, a little bit more formally. Now, how about this one? Well, I don't like this negative one-third in front, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative three, and that will get rid of this negative one-third fraction. But when I do that, I have to reverse the sign. So when I multiply this by negative three, that just turns into positive one times x plus four. You don't have to write this positive one here. I'm just doing it to remind you or to show you that I haven't ignored anything. I have to reverse the sign of this, but the equals stays. So less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. And then negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. So really, you would have written it this way, since that 1 as a placeholder doesn't really need to be there. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I end up with x greater than or equal to 17. There are also things which are known as double inequalities. A double inequality means that you actually have uh, uh, some sort of expression. The variables don't actually have to be in the middle. The variables can be all spread throughout. But you have some expression that involves this statement of, of using two inequalities built into it. If you do that, same rules, you could first of all, one thing you can do is you can split it off. If you prefer, I could take this piece and solve it and then I could take this piece and solve it. Solve them independently and then combine your answer at the end. But the rules of algebra, the rules of inequality, allow us to do this whole thing at once. So I'm going to take down here I will go ahead and actually I guess A is we're not at A yet. I'm going to solve the inequality first. So 10 less than or equal to, I'm going to just go ahead and expand this. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Be careful here because remember, of course, this is a negative 1. So negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. And negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7, less than 25. I'm going to simplify what's in the middle there. 6x minus 3x is 3x. Negative 15 plus 7 is negative 8, less than 25. I'm going to add 8 to everything, to all sides or to all terms. 
So I add 8 here, it becomes 18. Less than or equal to 3x. I add 8 over here, and it becomes 33. Divide everything by 3. 6 less than or equal to x less than 11. Notice the less than here stayed the same. The less than or equal to here stayed the same. So I end up with my answer being the numbers between 6 and 11. So my first answer using set notation, the way I would say that is x member of r such that and then I would just really just write this. I would just go ahead and say 6 less than or equal to x less than 11. You could also write this as two pieces. x member of r such that, and then you could say, okay, so x less than 11, that's easy enough to read, but 6 less than or equal to x, we wouldn't normally write it that way if we wanted to break this into two pieces. We would say x greater than or equal to 6 comma x less than 11. I think this first notation is by far clearer and more elegant. It is saying that the number x is between 6 and 11 including 6 but not including 11. This says the same thing but there's a little bit more thinking you have to do to make sure you understand what interval this is referring to. Then I say Interval notation. Interval notation is that new notation that I showed. We just lost our lost our work there. Okay. So interval notation, I would say that X is a member of, and I'm going to use interval notation. The lowest number here is 6, and the highest number here is 11, but it includes 6. And so the way that we say it includes 6 is not with a round bracket, but with a square bracket. And so this means includes 6, and the round bracket does not include 11. Okay, and then finally there is the number line itself. So I'm going from 6 to 11. So let's put there is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and I'll put some values on either side. It includes, my answer included 6. My answer did not include 11 and it is the values in between there. Now again, I'm using a colored line and kind of doing an ugly filling in there. The other thing you can do is something like this, if you're using a black pen or pencil, to show that it goes from 6 and includes 6 to 11, but does not include 11. And that is it for this lesson.